lovely people, another month has passed, so it is time for me to share with you the books that I experienced in the month of May. I experienced a whopping 10 books this month, so I'm just going to jump right in. The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. This is a sci-fi novel that was published in 1951. It's quite the classic. The story begins with when our main character, who has bandages over his eyes, wakes up in the hospital the morning after a meteorite shower. After no one comes to help him, he eventually wanders out of the hospital and removes his bandages to find masses of people who have lost their sight. The story also includes a species of plants who can move and seem to be able to communicate with one another and seem to be somehow connected to this phenomenon. This novel was quite compelling and the writing was quite good, kind of dry for my taste, which is why I switched to the audiobook because I needed to know how it ended. I look forward to picking up more of John Wyndham's novels in the future. If you have any suggestions for those, I'd love to hear that in the comments and I gave it 4 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in the Infernal Devices series, which is the prequel series to The Mortal Instruments. If you're unfamiliar with this series, it is a YA paranormal fantasy series set in London in the late 1800s. This novel included the typical YA paranormal trope, where a young, seemingly normal girl is thrown into circumstances with extraordinary people, only to discover that she is quite special herself. also included the typical YA love triangle, which is usually a deal breaker for me, but I feel like it was done fairly well and is pretty subtle in this first installment. I definitely enjoyed the characters and the setting more in this book, but I did not fall in love with the series. I'm definitely not the target audience for this novel. That being said, it's not a bad novel. I can see the appeal, it's just not for me. That being said, I gave this book 3 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. In case you missed it, I participated in the Bout of Books Readathon, May 13th through May 19th, in which I read 5 books. I already mentioned those books in my Bout of Books wrap-up, but I'll quickly mention them just in case you haven't gotten a chance to see that video yet. The first book I finished was Her by Krista Paravani. It is an insightful, intimate memoir about the relationship between identical twins and how one twin deals with the loss of another twin. I really enjoyed this memoir and I gave it 5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote. Classic novella with a great voice. A definite read for anyone who is a fan of the film has not yet read the source material. I gave it 4 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. Bridget Jones's Diary by Helen Fielding. A funny, genuine voice, quick and easy read, and an interesting take on the classic Pride and Prejudice. I gave it four stars out of five on Goodreads. Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Maria Simple. Simultaneously hilarious and touching, I re and I really enjoyed the format of this novel, and I gave it five stars out of five on Goodreads. Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babette. It put an excellent perspective on immortality, especially for children. I gave it four stars out of five on Goodreads. And if you'd like to hear more about my feelings on those books, you can check out my Bout of Books wrap-up video, which I'll leave in the description. During the Bout of Books readathon, I snuck in a children's book that I failed to mention in my wrap-up, and it was The Day I Swapped My Father for Two Goldfish, written by Neil Gaiman and illustrated by Dave McKean. The story is just a cute little children's tale, but the art in this book is absolutely gorgeous. I gave this book five stars based on the art alone. If I can find some good examples of the artwork, I'll show them here and here. After the readathon, I was a little burnt out on reading, so I only completed two books after the readathon. The first one was an audiobook, and it is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Osecki. This audiobook was narrated by the author Ruth Osecki, which I think added a really great touch. The novel is duly narrated between Ruth, a modern day writer living in Canada, and now a Japanese girl whose diary washes up on the shore near where Ruth lives. I feel like there's a lot that I could say about this novel, but I just can't find the words. While the listening experience was excellent, I wish that I could have read the book as well. That's how captivating the narration of this book was. The characters were intriguing, and it was a great insight into the Japanese culture. Some parts of it seemed to drag on a little bit. Overall, though, I really enjoyed the experience, and maybe in the future I'll be able to pick up a hard copy and read it. I gave this book 4 stars out of 5 on Goodreads last book I finished was coincidentally called The Last Wild by Pierce Torday. I did a full review of this book on my channel, which I will leave in the description, so I won't say much about it here. It was good, but I rarely felt compelled to pick it up between readings. I gave this book 3 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. Those are all of the books that I experienced in the month of May. I also watched several movies, as if to make up for the lack of movies I've watched the past few months. If you'd like to hear about those, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll make a video about it. Otherwise, I'll leave a link to a list where I keep up with all of the movies that I've watched in 2013. I have a lot of ideas for videos, so I hope to see you with them very soon. Thank you for watching.